watching. We're going to chat, Louise. Let's so, see that. How's life today? All right. How's life going today? Good day? It's um, busy, but good. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, we went to the um, St. Patrick's uh, parade in the morning and um, it was kind of interesting, you know, like uh, I guess seeing just people getting excited over beats is kind of fun. I guess that was my, my amusement. <laughs> Um, ironically, and I will say that uh, we had to reschedule because Facebook was stupid this week. Um, I actually work part time on top of my full time job as a bartender at a very authentic Irish pub. And I was the closing bartender last night. So I'm working in about two hours of sleep. <laughs> so please forgive no, me no, if I'm not on point. <laughs> this is the high I'm holy sure weekend. Will. Yeah, totally. <laughs> yes. Totally understandable. Yes. Um, so I think we're getting some engagement now. I'm looking. Do you know, um, number one, like I always tell people, hi, Aw, see all those people? Um, like I always tell people, I'm not a hyper professional. I believe in having fun and just being real. So um, if you'd like to see a really dry professional production, please go watch PBS. It's free, right, but yeah. actually it's not because it's funded through theft. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. No, 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 no. This yes. is much better. <laughs> yeah. Um, so uh, we had became Facebook friends, and I was interested in a lot of the stuff you do. You are an entrepreneur. You're a dad. You're a voluntarist, or you, would you consider yourself a voluntarist? Absolutely. Okay. Um, a lot of people are like, I like the term anarchist. I like the term voluntarist. I like the term libertarian. And, and sometimes that makes me laugh a little bit because I don't know. We could spend a lot of time, de uh, time defining terms, but I think that's a waste of time. So yeah, absolutely. I'm just going to use. Yeah. Um, so we'll start with hi, people. Oh, wait. Somebody has something funny. I, I take it I must have been the only sober Irish dude within the world today. I don't know. Probably. You look, you look pretty Irish, Louise. <laughs> really? That's funny. I have like zero Irish. I have, um, <laughs> actually, I found out that I have like 0.4% uh, Jew. So that's, the, you know, there's going to be some interesting conspiracy theories on that. Oh, oh really? So, yeah. Are we going to go Alex Jones on this live? Because I'm ready. I have the papers to prove it. I'm actually a quarter Jew. <laughs> so, wow. you know, like a quarter of me is going to rule the world. The other 75% I'm pretty much screwed. Oh, by the way, I do swear. This is fine. This will get uh, broadcasted on a few different platforms and stuff. Um, but I hope that doesn't offend. If you have kids around, I hate you there. It's okay. It's okay. It's fine. Are you okay, good. Are you okay with that, Louise? Okay. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, some of the things that you do. Hi. PBS is bought. Okay. Oh, hi, Murdoch. <laughs> um, so I'll take some live questions for sure. Uh, I actually, you followed that thread today. There was, there were people that were asking questions about um, voluntarism and praxology. I don't know if I necessarily want to go there with you because I think most of our audience will be pe people that already kind of know those the ins and outs of those questions. But I think you have yeah. a unique perspective. Yeah. Um, well, thank you. So you, yeah. So I'm going to give your bio now because I think we have some engagement. Oh, we do. Okay. Um, so this is now. I'm just going right here right now. Obviously, Mises is not your actual last name, or are you that lucky? Uh, no, it's not. That's your pseudonym? Yeah, you know, it's a <laughs> way to, to put a Trump wall, if you will, between activism and client work. So none of that gets, I mean, you know, like on this stuff, we get death threats, we get all sorts of hate. And oh, yeah. I mean, I'm always like, you know, so it, it's it's another protection. I'm burping, sorry. Um <laughs> So let me ask you then, like in your inbox, because I get a lot of really nasty stuff. Because of your activism, do you get a lot of that? 
Oh yeah, so much of it. I mean, as of uh, probably within the last six or eight months, not as much, especially because uh, the page, the, the Facebook page, Emancipated Human, I just let it go. Um, you know, I was like, you know, I'm going to take oh, a break no. for a little bit. Uh, well, it's just momentary, like uh, just a little, you know, temporary. I've been doing it for, I don't know, seven years or so. And, and after like it got hijacked, it got stolen from me about, I don't know, maybe a year ago really? or so. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody actually uh, was messaging me, telling me, if you try to do anything, we're going to release your um, intimate photos and all of this and that. Because, you know, so I was like, yeah, OK, I'll just, you know, I mean, there's probably worse things outside, like in the Internet, you know, so I, I probably wouldn't yeah. be too worried if they came out. <laughs> but uh you know, I didn't want to necessarily fight about it, but so it got taken away and I had to start it over. That's, I had no idea. Um, and you know, it's so funny. I think about people uh, like us, and I don't mean to collectivize you, but people that are voluntarists that maybe uh, think freely. Um, it's so funny how people are threatened by us because we're such a small percentage of the population. <laughs> And we preach nonviolence and non-aggression, and it's, I just find it by, very ironic that people would want to threaten us, of all people. Well, you know, I, it does make sense to me, especially like, you know, I get, I get hate from left side of the spectrum, but I get like the actual um, violent threats from the right side of the spectrum. And it's primarily because they, like, you know, we are um, challenging their belief system so you know people that put like their entire uh, life's purpose and mission has been around this idea of nationalism you know we're basically mm -hmm. breaking that to pieces and then they get angry they get upset and then they, they feel like they need to you know there was a thomas sewell quote and i'm paraphrasing but it was like it's not the problem that little him. timmy feet like like can't think or something but he confuses his feeling with thinking or something along, along those lines so that's what a lot of these people mm -hmm. are doing they're um they're very visceral and they're like uh, because they're angry because of that so i mean it's normal you just you know have to deal with it and whatever you know it's funny luis and i'm straying off topic not topic but i'm straying off my script a little bit because i find that uh i came from the far right and I find some of the most visceral hate and threats from right wingers because, number one, I actually don't believe that there's a difference between the left and right. There's just freedom and then there's chains. <laughs> um, it's just what flavor of chains you like. But uh, I think it's very interesting. I might, back in my neocon days, consider you a leftist just because of optics. Um, which is really cool because when I be, started to lean towards liberty and then eventually became an anarchist, my mind was opened that, that you know, there's not a left or right. And just because I don't have the same actual like uh, moral system of belief of somebody doesn't mean that I can't actually agree and uh, that I can't uh, have the same appreciation of non-aggression. Like as me, I'm a Christian. This is my personal belief. But you're a, sh you're a shaman. You have some spiritual beliefs, very different in some ways. Um, but the fact that we believe in non-aggression means that uh, we have a lot in common, probably much more so than most people in this world, which is quite ironic in, in many ways. So I did want to talk to you about that. So I'm not super familiar. Um, I did study uh, religious philosophy, and I know that uh, being a shaman isn't necessarily religion. Um, I kind of think it is, but that's okay. We could go into that later. So I want to definitely discuss that tonight, but I want to start with your story. So little Louise was born into the world. Uh, what kind of upbringing? <laughs> it's funny. It's funny. All right. What kind of upbringing did you have? Like your family life? Like how did that shape your philosophy? So Louise was born in when? Go ahead. All right. So, um, city that's where you know where i'm from and um uh, it's if you know upper middle class i went to you know private schools and all that my dad was an engineer my mom stayed at home for the most part she had a couple of uh 
little ventures here and there, uh, but you know, not. I guess I'm, I'm, it was it was nice growing up. You know, we would go like at some point, and this is something that kind of started shaping my my political philosophy when I was little because we had a little more than a lot of my neighbors, and mm -hmm. I felt a little bit of um, probably shame that you know like we had more than they did and mm -hmm. uh, in my early or development you know like late teens maybe 17 18 i was gravitating towards uh the, the idea of socialism because uh i i wanted the, the it seemed like a very um like the right thing to do to to have that uh level of like you know the, the least paid person cannot make more less than five times what the highest person makes and you know the entire marxist ideology you know all that so mm -hmm. anyway so i i like that and, and especially because you know i mean the, the latin american community tends to be a little bit more um tribal i guess more a little bit more leftist in that idea that because the the government is extremely socialist and they're super powerful um we have to stick together so it's super tribal like a mm -hmm. lot of times you, uh, if you have something for somebody, like if, if you have something for yourself, if, if you cannot share it, you don't even show it because then you're, you're seen necessarily like, uh, you know, like you're an individualist. That's, that's like a bad thing actually. Um, mm -hmm. So, you know, all that mental programming and whatever. But um, so at the same time, like my dad was pretty libertarian. Like, I mean, when I was, I don't know, 10 years old or so, he's the one that actually explained um inflation to me and how oh, cool that and so that was that was pretty cool and you know and then being that he you know engineer owned his own business at some point he was you know in the secretary of public transportation of mexico city and i mean all of that also helped me understand like the the entire facade of government because at some point like somebody showed up and they opened like a couple of briefcases full of money and they said, this is yours if you let us continue to do what we're doing. And what we're, they were doing is, you know, like somebody would come in and uh, refurbish the transmissions for the buses and, and you know, public transportation. But uh, okay. what these guys would do is like they would just wash them and paint them, not necessarily fix them. So they would mm -hmm. charge as if they were doing the job, but they were not doing it. And my dad would get a cut if he would let it happen because he was new, you know. Um, so he didn't like that. He actually quit and, um, he, he was like, you know, I, I can generate that much money without having to do all these things. So, I mean, those like specific moments in life, like, you know, even if you're given like the keys of, you know, everything, like dude was like standing in his principles. And, and that was something that I always appreciated, you know, um, same, you know, with, with my, so I have like the, the left brain business mind ethical with my dad and the right brain mm -hmm. more emotional like service oriented towards people from my mom and i mean it's not that they're just separated but they work together really nicely mm -hmm. so i mean does that I kind of answer actually yeah i think that's actually a really good point um i think uh the state and uh culture now um driven by a very corrupt media and some kind of weird uh, social media stuff. It makes people think that the left and the right are completely different and diametrically opposed to each other. When sometimes you can, I, number one, I don't believe they technically are, are different, but uh, you can take being a charitable person and caring for other people, but you can also be really rational and the way that you carry that out, and those are not opposed to each other. What the media, what the state does is they try to separate them. Um, and, and so it's hard for people to reconcile that because obviously we grow up thinking that these two things are different. And it was funny, Luis, um, on the post where I said I was going to interview you and that you were an entrepreneur, uh, there was a gentleman that was advocating for socialism. I believe he was um, from Great Britain. Um, but he couldn't understand the idea that uh, in a voluntary society that you could still be a generous, generous person and like help other people out. And that really doesn't have anything to do with the state. If the state didn't exist, well, it doesn't really matter if I want to help somebody. I actually.
hopefully we're more, much more able to help them. Um, anyways, we're going down into that whole rabbit trail of volunteerism, and I wanted to talk to you about stuff that's um, specific to you. So I'm going to give your bio here, which, by the way, I did Google this, um, but there was a word in your bio that I didn't even know what it meant. What is a curandero? Um, What's a curandero? Or is it surandero? What is that? Curandero, yeah. It's, I, it's just... Yeah, what is it? Um, okay, well, I mean, it literally means healer. Um, I've, I've... It's, yeah, That's it's fancy. kind of... <laughs> I get shy talking about it. Because, you know, oh, it's... don't get shy! I'm not joking. It's the like, balance between, like, I can do this but I don't want to be boastful about it. But if I don't say it or mention it, people won't know that I'm doing it and they won't be able to benefit. Like if somebody asks for help, right? Like they, they know because I said it. So again, you know, like you grow up telling, you know, people tell you don't toot your own horn kind of thing. And mm -hmm. the, the idea behind it is like, I, I want to be able to help people. Like this is like, I have skill work. And but at the same time, like, if you're just like, oh, yeah, I am this, like, I mean, if you have to say that you are like an amazing healer and all these things and like, you know, sometimes I'm weary about those kinds of people. So I'm very interested in all of this, Luis. So let's get down into the, the nitty gritty then. Um, and we'll right, talk uh, voluntarism and entrepreneurship, too. But to me, this is the most interesting part of you, um, which is really cool. Um, I'm sure you, I say um and like a lot, it's fine, whatever. I'm never going to be professional. Um, here, I went again. But I know so many anarchists that come from so many different schools of thought, and then we all have this sort of common thread of non-aggression, and like it, it helps us trust each other more and, and want to be friends with people that have uh, the same mindset. However, you know, I've got Christian anarchist friends. I have atheist anarchist friends. I don't, except for you now, Louise, have any um, anarchist friends uh, that are like shamans or believe in that stuff. So what is your belief system as far as that, um, your spirituality, I guess? Okay. Well, I can tell you, like, um, when I went to Anarchapulco, I actually talked a lot about it. And my belief is that it's... Um, I even believe in the decentralization of religion. So in, in my hypothesis okay. is that... Oh, we're getting uh, heavy. <laughs> decentralization of religion leads to shamanism because you, you, you are mm -hmm. not necessarily contingent upon like a middleman between you and the divine. So you now have a direct mm -hmm. connection to the divine. And it's like going from um, dial-up to DSL to fiber optic. Now you're just like room okay. connected and you can like actually like you're not delegating, you're not uh, voting for, you know, salvation, maybe perhaps like so that's kind of like the idea is like you are connected with the divine. And it's, that doesn't mean that you're going to be perfect or that you're not going to make mistakes or stupid stuff. It's more like, you know, you, you're. Um, you're open to see things through your own senses instead of having to get those perspectives ideas information from something or somebody else um so it's so, a direct connection with spirituality Is that yeah 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 so you're basically yeah. instead of like just like maybe reading a book about it or getting somebody's perspective on it or like getting a priest to tell you what to think or what to pray about on sundays or wednesday nights here it's like mm -hmm. you are so connected to the, your unconscious mind, to the id, you know, to uh, the universal consciousness that you're able to um, connect and see and feel and like oh, it, it's um, pretty pretty interesting. And it goes, you know, about saying like it's it's not that I'm saying yeah this is the right path or the only way to do it. Like I think that it's an individual path and every path is not for everybody. So that's just kind of mm -hmm. what I'm into. And I, um, I mean, it, it gets to the, like I have exorcisms. I've healed people. Like I've, you know, brought like little animals back to life. I mean, all sorts of things. Like, I mean, it's, 
uh, connecting directly with Christ consciousness, doing, um, I mean, you name it, like all that stuff has been done. Um, poltergeist, healing, cure, oh, you know, um, out of body experiences, so, let, shit, all of it. Let, let me stop you there. I want to say uh, two things. Uh, number one, I have Christians that follow me. And just because I entertain Louise's ideas and I respect his beliefs doesn't mean I believe the same thing. I actually really appreciate it. And I think that if you're a spiritual person, you should definitely not stay in your own zone and look outside of it. Um, so I'm just going to uh, premise that because there's going to be people that will be like, oh, mm-hmm. you're a heretic, mm-hmm. you're going to burn in hell. But I get plenty of those anyways. Um, but I think that's actually an interesting perspective because it goes to like human nature. Um, and when you're talking about, uh, and I can relate, I also think, I, you know, I believe in a creator and I think that any truth is divine, whether it comes from a Buddhist or whatever. I believe ultimately in a creator, God. But, you know, if somebody says truth, well, then it's truth. So I think it's interesting you talk about the direct connection to a creator because I, I believe in that too. And I believe that we're created in divine image, the image of God, so that, that we do have a direct connection. And we, I think we had talked about um, you're not necessarily a, a believer in the Christian faith, but you're a follower of Christ because he kind of was, that's what he was, the segue to that. And I think that's really relatable, even if somebody doesn't believe in Christian or uh, spirituality or spirituality in general, the fact that we are uh, divine in some sense, not that we are God, because to me that's blasphemy to say that, but the fact that we can be autonomous, that we can make decisions and we can uh, own ourselves and that we are... um, Intellectual beings that have power over the world around us through our actions, um, through the way we treat other people, a lot of that uh, lends itself towards self-ownership, I believe. So I think it's really interesting what you're talking about that. Yeah, thank you. Um, and, and, you know, I think that there's a lot of truncated truths that are being given in, in you know, the religious aspects enough to where people feel in their soul that those things are legit but at the same time there is a control aspect so they're basically disconnecting people uh at the top of you know their own um psychological pyramid and then at the very cap it's uh, somebody telling you like dosifying the information to you instead of you being able to experience it directly so that's you know like mm-hmm. where, where i um what i've seen what i've experienced and, and yeah i mean you mentioned it like i am um uh, a Christ uh, consciousness follower and you know I've had people that tell me no that's bullshit that you're wrong you're a heretic you're you know worshiping the devil whereas mm-hmm. like that has nothing to do with it but you know so so that's it and and I like you know I only get I guess like a little bit hesitant to talk about it and like super public um because I only talk about those things with people that are kind of in the similar vibe so they don't freak out or they don't um, I guess take it wrong, I suppose, and you know it could be misunderstood, or you know some issues could come up. And but I mean, ultimately, oh, that's, under- yeah, that's-, that's understandable. Yeah. Well, number one, I don't take that. I'm like a a Christian that goes to church and takes communion. I don't think you're creepy at all. <laughs> um, but what what's ironic and funny is, so all of us have these different beliefs. Um, uh, and we may be voluntarists, but at the same, in the same vein, the rest of the world looks at us like we're the creepiest people in the world, which is so funny. So you kind of get thrown into this redheaded stepchild, which redheads are the awesomest. But, um, you know, I can, I can have the same faith as somebody. Um, I, I can believe in Christ as a uh, sacrifice and uh, absolution for my sin, reconciliation to God. But heaven forbid that I believe that the government is inherently evil and that I own myself, <laughs> that I'm called a heretic. Um, and it's kind of funny how that sounds. And I don't want to spend the whole time like on your spirituality. I just found it very interesting because you're one of the um, few anarchists I know that uh, practice that. And I just, I always think that knowledge is power. But you're also an alter- entrepreneur. I like that word. Always sounds so fancy. Yes. So, So, (laughs) yeah, we're really fancy here. Oh, also, I want to break because I broke from the notes because we're chit chatting and having a good time. I want to give a shout out to Disenthrall guys, and I'll I'll uh, have Patrick link that at the end. They're producing this. 
Number one, if you want quality content and you're a voluntarist or just interested in like maybe free thought, you should follow them. They are so far ahead of <laughs> like their base. These guys produce like really high quality, super awesome stuff. They're phenomenal. And um, you can get their content for free at uh, Disenthrall if you just go on Facebook. So please do that. Anyways, let's talk about entrepreneurship. Let's do that. So, yes. So, um, emancipated human, I know you talked about somebody hijacked it, which I didn't know that. So, what is it that you do when you go and speak? Tell me a little bit about uh, what you do. Okay, so, you know, the bread and butter, I suppose, is I'm a leadership development consultant. Mm -hmm. And in, in, in a nutshell, what I do is we teach um, corporations about volunteerism. And it, it, I was uh, telling wow. somebody, I, I, <laughs> help, I help people to people. Because, you know, when you are working and, and then you are really good at your trade and you get promoted, um, basically you're a supervisor now because you're fairly good at your trade, but you're not necessarily good at peopling. So I teach them, you know, skills to be able to do their job because they're like their job is no longer the actual trade. Now they're supervisors or maybe they're managers or maybe they're directors or maybe they're C-level. So every step uh, you have to learn new skills. You have to do other things. And a lot of times people get stuck in the one below. So I, I you know, me and my team, we help them um, with those skills and, and um, practices. And, you know, we even go to like teach creativity. We teach them meditation, uh, visualization, uh, all of these things that uh, like really highly successful people, um, high performing teams do. Uh, we also, you know, sometimes whenever there's like really, really big, um, things being built like huge hospitals or like, you know, stadiums or whatever. And they need a couple of different contractors maybe because for one, it's not enough. And then they have like the electricians and then the, you know, builders and whatever, you know, all sorts of people. So we do alignments because a lot of times they're like, you know, this is my company and this is, you know, my rules and whatever. And everybody's got their own silos. So what we do is we go in, we help them with, um, divisions, um, missions, and, and, you know, help them focus and, and, and just goal minded, basically. And, and, you know, it takes five, six sessions, uh, sometimes more if the, if the process is pretty lengthy. Uh, so, you know, that's, that's basically what we do. Um, the pyramid of power usually is like this, and there's somebody on top telling everybody what to do. And, you know, shit rolls downhill, basically kind of thing. So what we do is like, we turn the pyramid of power upside down. And the actual role of the supervisor, the manager, whatever, is not necessarily to tell people what to do. Because if you're hiring somebody, most likely they mm -hmm. have an idea of what to do. So what happens is uh, as a supervisor now, your role is to remove obstacles, blockages for people to do their work, um, to engage them, to motivate them, to create uh, strategic planning and all of these things that will keep people uh, focused on your vision so they can you know, feel more ownership, they feel happier, they feel more productive. And everybody wins. So ultimately, uh, you know, people get wealthier, people get happier, and they, they enjoy their jobs more because, you know, there's a lot of people that are like, oh, hell, you know, I hate Mondays or, oh, yeah, I love Fridays. I mean, so basically, mm -hmm. they just love like two and a half days out of the entire week. That's miserable. So we help them basically uh, find their purpose, uh, find what uh, lights them up, what turns them on, and, you know, just to rest, you know, the, if the, you wake up happy on Monday, you know, because you want to do your your work yeah so it's, it's very different than your normal stuff and that, you know that's one of the things that people really dislike about capitalism i guess that oh i have to go to work like i mean mm -hmm. even if you like what's the, the the opposite of that like you have to p go pick up apples from a tree if there were no jobs and like i don't want to have to make yeah. my own house or you know my own suits like screw that i don't like getting dirty necessarily i don't want to grow my own food i like to go to whole foods <laughs> You know, so uh, division of labor <laughs> is what creates wealth. So, you know, if you're really good at something. I think that's a cool intersection, Louise. Um, I think that's what, and I, I, I think that might be what's missing from people's idea of capitalism, um, praxology, free markets, is they're just thinking it's 
you're being forced to do something because you're hungry, whereas you're kind of taking it as what can you do that you enjoy and divide labor amongst other people that they do what they enjoy, which really is laissez-faire economics and praxology. It really is. You're yeah, a lot of people are kind of like a human level. To do what they like. You know, they're like, oh, you know, they, they get brainwashed by the parents. Like, you know, I hate work. Now you have to go to work. You have to get ready for that. And, and you know, like I, I did not see that growing up. I saw my dad being successful and happy and my mom being successful and happy. And so, I, I mean, I started like businesses since I was a little kid. You know, I started selling candy or loose cigarettes or whatever I could do. Like, I <laughs> That's awesome. Candy. Uh, my Super Nintendo games and my VHS movies back in like the late 80s, early 90s to my school friends. And like, I just wanted to provide a service <laughs> and get some money so I could do stuff, you know? So like from very yeah. early age, I've been just trying to like exercise my entrepreneurial, uh, I don't know, gene, DNA or whatever. Mm -hmm. I think that's awesome. Uh, we're going to, you know what we're going to do now, Luis, because I have other questions and I did have people ask me some for you. You have okay. a little fan club, by the way. <laughs> um, so we're going to talk about Kratom and a little bit more about entrepreneurship, but now we're going to play a game. Are you ready? All right, let's play games. Yes, don't be nervous. I'm a I'm nice ready. person, I promise. Okay. I played this with Eric July, and it was super fun. So I'm not going to play a word game with you. What I'm going to play, it's kind of like Cards Against Humanity. It's called Pick Your Poison. Okay. Okay. This will tell us a little bit about who Luis is as a person. Um, so I give you, basically, I'm going to pull a random card and give you situations, and you have to pick one. Okay. Are you ready? Ready, <laughs> ready. Okay. I'll throw out anything that's completely... Okay. Would you rather, <laughs> we're going to go be very silly now. Are you ready to be silly? Okay. Totally. All right. I already know what I'd pick on this one. Would you rather have snakes for arms or believe absolutely everything you've ever been told? Snakes for arms. Me too. <laughs> okay. That's a good one. All right. All right. Would you rather, I don't even know what that word means, so we're going to skip to the next one. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I told you this is not fancy, Louise. Okay. Would you rather lose your short-term memory or lose five seconds of your life every time you blink? Oh, that's hard. Oh, whoa. That's Shit. hard. That's like next level. Dang. Um, you. Five seconds every time I blink. Oh, how sad for you. Wrong answer. I'm just messing <laughs> Okay. <laughs> All right. Let's do another one. This is fun. All right. All right. All right, Louise. Oh, look, there's a lot of people watching. Holy crap. Aren't you a fancy pants? Uh, it's, right. it's not at all. No, it's you. <laughs> Okay, sure. Most of the days, I can't even, like, I pretty much have to Google most of the words that I write. I'm just saying. All right. Would you rather be below average at everything or never talk to any of your friends again? Below average. Aw. That's actually a really sweet answer, and I think that, that's a good one. All right. Pick your poison, Luis. What's, so your actual last name is not Mises. But I'm going to come up with a more fun last name for you. We should call okay. you Luis Rothbard because that sounds super. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Would you rather... This, <laughs> this one. Would you rather have an incurable case of pink eye or... <laughs> Or have your hands become visibly wet every time you shake someone's hand? Um, the hand one. <laughs> that was hilarious. Yes, sweaty hands. 
<laughs> okay, sweaty hands. All right. How about you? Uh, one of these, then we'll go back to some serious stuff. Okay. <laughs> Okay, would you rather, <laughs> what, I, <laughs> sorry, I'm laughing, you know, would you rather to become me. Amish, or have a 25 pound ball attached to your ankle? I never like zippers anyway. Amish? I could go yeah, on about totally. the Amish. I have a whole thing about them, but anyways, thank you for playing that game with me. Oh, absolutely. Hey, Patrick, where was the music? Where's the music, Patrick? Oh. Oh, he said he wanted to know more about both of us. Hi, Jim E. Rustler. Thank you for the comment. Follow Luis. Jim E. Rustler. It's so funny. Yeah, I know. That's a clever one. I've never been I have an actual name as my profile. Right. Me neither. I I wanted to talk to you. And I, I don't know if you want. I I know that we talked a lot about, about my kratom, but I did have a lot of people uh, ask that. A lot of people don't even know what it is. In my life, I've talked to people uh, about kratom. Uh, just. Um, as far as a remedy for certain uh, illnesses and things like that. So you uh, actually are a, um, what would you call your, yourself? You sell trusted Kratom. Distributor. Um, trusted distributor. A distributor, that's the word I was looking for. See, it's another thing. Like, Luis, I can't even say the word distributor right now because um, I'm still laughing at your sweaty hands. Anyway. <laughs> Anyways. Um, so I had some questions about that. So a lot of people confuse it with cannabis, which I think is kind of funny. Um, so what exactly is Kratom? Okay, so it's a shrubbery and it's a cousin to the coffee plant. And it's been used for, I don't know, two or 300 years in the ring of fire, you know, uh, Southeast Asia for various mm -hmm. ailments. So it's, it's widely known over there. And within the last, I don't know, 30 to 40 years, it came to the United States to uh, actually one of my friends that makes one of the extracts is one of the pioneers that brought Kratom to the States. Uh, so what it is, is like, I mean, I don't, it's a plant and, and that's what it is, right? So huh. it is a vasoconstrictor. So it's like coffee. It gives you energy, but it also releases some feel good things. Now it's not an opioid. Um, it, it, it See, a lot of people with, say that. Yeah, it's not. It connects to the uh, to your to your re receivers, and it makes you feel good. Uh, but it's not one, right? So, like for instance, I cannot legally claim, you know, health benefits because I kind of enjoy not being in jail. But I can tell you that some people say that they find a lot more energy. Uh, a lot of people find, uh, you know, like if they have the blues, stuff like that, it helps them. Um, pain management. Some people claim that it's way better than cannabis. Actually, a lot of people claim that. I actually have helped dozens of people get off of opiates. Um, I have helped like people get off of heroin addiction. Um, you know, people that had totally lost their jobs. They were about to go to financial ruin. They were like skinny as my finger. Oh, and, it or not. You know, um, Kratom has helped them tremendously to regain their lives and people that get hooked in oxycodone, hydrocodone, you know, they, they get a lot of uh, benefit from it too, they claim. So it's something that, uh, it's, it's uh, a fantastic plant. Like, okay, so and, I, and the reason I discovered it is because I got a brown recluse bite uh, almost four years ago. And it really, oh. like, I didn't get any necrosis I didn't lose any of my limbs and I didn't die. That's usually what happens. Hello, cat. And oh, I have a kitty cat that was here earlier. <laughs> <laughs> so even though I didn't get any physical issues, uh, I, I lost basically like a lot of my strength on the left side of my body to the point where like driving mm -hmm. on, with my left 
I could not do it. Like, I was too tired to do it. Like, it, I had zero strength. So I found Kratom and I started taking it and, and it saved my life. Like, I, I, you know, I had a lot of energy. And usually, like, I mean, I'm somebody that would sleep four and a half, five hours a night and work like 19 hours a day. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I have two kids and a wife and a mom and all of that. And, and you know, I'm an activist. So, like, always on the go. So I was like, I cannot mm-hmm. afford not, not to do this because it's, uh, I mean, it's like the lifestyle and, and you know, uh, money generation, generation and all of this. So um, that's how I discovered it. And then whenever the government tried to make it illegal, the FDA tried to put it as a Schedule 1, I was like, you know, all my friends are anarchists, or at least most of them. So if they see that the government wants to get rid of something, they're going to want it, whether they know what the hell it is or not. And literally, like I had people mm-hmm. like, I mean, I, I the first time I ordered six kilos to sell. And like the same day they got sold out, there was people who was like, I don't know what the hell that is, but if the government wants it banned, I want two of them. <laughs> so, you know, I had to like, That's awesome. order, yeah, continuously. And then I was like, hell, this may be a business. So, you know, I <laughs> saw how wonderful it was for me. So I was like, I want to bring that to other people, especially because like I had done the legwork, shopping, several vendors, testing, like my Kratom has been tested by the University of Chile. And, you know, to, no bacteria, no fungus, among us, no other additives. Because some, some people add uh, green tea to the Kratom to exist a little bit cheaper to do that. Um, Mine is clean. So I was already getting the best stuff that I could have found. And so I, I was just passing that on to people. And, and you know, um, it's to, the, to this point, like I, I have some extracts that I'm selling as well. And I always keep this one in my pocket just in case somebody's in like a lot of pain or whatever. Like this stuff helps people with rheumatoid arthritis or MS or you name it. This stuff is like amazing. Um, migraines, all sorts of things. So that's uh, that's basically what it is. And uh, it's definitely not tasty, but you get used to the taste, uh, at least it's personally. It's not tasty. I have partaken, mm-hmm. and it's not tasty. But I think uh, a three second, if it helps you with some um, ailments and some issues, three seconds of poor taste is not <laughs> it's not that bad. Um, yeah. But yeah, it's it's really interesting. You talk about like anarchists and like if the government outlaws it. Like I, my good friend takes CBD oil, which is a different, completely different plant, but. Um, like the government finds anything that's actually a decent natural remedy and just try to make it illegal for big pharma. We could go down that path. But um, I think uh, our very kind producer will be dropping um, your website in the show notes, <clears throat> Patrick, uh, which I think there's a link, which I checked out. Patrick, what are you doing? You could say something if you want to. You don't have to, though. Um, but Emancipated Human has a link to your Kratom business. I saw that. Yes, 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 yeah. absolutely. And, yes. you know, yes. if, um, I take crypto as well. If people don't want to use, like, debit or credit cards, Venmo, uh, Cash App. That's awesome. Oh, that's, if, if I know the person, like, I could do Apple Pay or, you know, people that I trust mm-hmm. that I can give them my number to. Um, uh, sometimes some people mail me checks, too. So whatever, you know, I take silver gold whatever you want to give me i'll take it that's like the that's like next level woke louise <laughs> <laughs> you know I mean, but seriously like, at, at, with the the challenge of sounding petty like a lot of times you know when when money is tight you don't think about taking other things beyond cash or card because you need the money at that mm-hmm. moment so because I'm not in that position, I'm able to take other forms of payment with other people, whatever helps them. Uh, and sometimes mm-hmm. like people are like really struggling. I do like bro prize or sometimes like if there's somebody like, I'm fucked, I'm in heroin, I'm on heroin, I can't pay you. You know, I send them stuff for free too. And uh, if anybody that's watching oh, this wait. is like really struggling Louise, with something. Wh- why would you do that? There's no... Why would you do that? You need the government to tell you to help other people. Oh my gosh, you helped people without the government helping you? <laughs> it's insane. Yeah, you don't know, but there's a gun right <laughs> in my head that if I don't say that, they're going to shoot me. Yeah. Well, if the government yeah. didn't exist, you wouldn't help those people, right? 
I mean, that's oh, obvious. yeah, 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 totally, totally. <laughs> you know, like, back in my yeah. parents' situation, like, I grew up seeing how they help so many people, like, they would buy, like, a new living room set every three years, and they would just give it away to somebody that needed it, or a new television, just, just give it away, like, it's kind of weird for my mom, like, sometimes she says, why are people selling all their stuff? Why are they not just giving it away? I'm like, mom, you know, you kind of live in a bubble. Uh -huh. Like not everybody has the kind of, uh, <laughs> you know, financial yeah. situation. As we do. <laughs> but um, yeah, I mean, like just because you can't help, you should help, you know, why not? But actually, I, and I do think, I think more people than other people think like are inclined to help people, even if they don't take, make any financial gain. I mean, obviously I'm a capitalist and I believe that free market um, are absolutely the best way for people to live. But it's really funny. Um, like I said, on that thread where I said, hey, I'm going to interview Luis. He's an entrepreneur. He does this and that. And this guy started talking about socialism. And I'm like, I don't understand how you think that um, me doing things throughout, uh, without violent coercion has anything to do with why I wouldn't, wouldn't help someone. In fact, if the government doesn't exist, it's much easier to help people. So... Um, it's, a, it's a funny mindset, uh, but I think p more people are inclined to help people, um, and even if it doesn't necessarily benefit that their selves very much. I, I truly believe that. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, you know, I think here, this country is actually extremely generous, very, very, mm -hmm. very generous. And, and, and I see it all the time. And it's like so wonderful to, to see that and to witness it. So. I, I see that, um, you know, one of the main things about capitalism and, and people that like are intentional about making money is uh, the law of uh, reciprocity. And what that means is whatever you want, you have to give it away. If you want mm -hmm. more business or more attention or more money or more love or more whatever, you first have to give it away. And that's kind of like a pl planting a seed. Like, okay, I could I sell love a seed, that. but if I plant That's the awesome. seed, it would give more. And mm -hmm. then like, I mean, we sometimes end up with like 150 cantaloupes that we can't eat and we give them away, you know? Um, and that's, that's like what, like people that are really, really, really intentional about um, money generation. That's one of their belief systems. Yes, capitalism is actually like the most charitable. <laughs> uh, uh, economic system, and I wouldn't even call it an economic system. Actually, I like the uh, I like to study praxology a little bit because the <clears throat> the path of least resistance and most production is actually to me the most moral path. Uh, so I, I just I think there's uh, you know we're not taught that growing up, and there's this huge like people are scared of not having a state, so they want government control of economic systems. And anyway, we could go down a rabbit trail there, but. I think most people that are watching us, oh, look, somebody's asking a question, Louise. I do have ADHD, so I forgive me. I'll be like, oh, look, a chicken. All right. <laughs> oh, look. Oh, there's your website. Hey, people, if you're interested in Kratom, um, Louise's website is up there. And then can they message you through that? Send you a message? Yeah. If they're interested yeah, in some absolutely. facts about it. Awesome. Totally, totally. You oh, know, Tyler, if you Facebook message me, I'm always happy to receive messages here. Hey, here's my here's my funny friend, Tyler420, who's a libertarian. Oh, it didn't go back. Patrick, stop scrolling on my page. Okay. Anarchy isn't pragmatic. I don't even know what that means. Let's just skip past that. All right, let's see if I can't find a question, Louise. Um Alejandro reminds me of that. Okay, guys, yeah, here's the links to Luis's site. And here's another question from Tyler420. Are you ready? He's such yes, an yes, ass. Yes, yes, yes. He's a funny ass, though. I can't. My stupid. I'm not going to ask that question. Never mind. All right. So, Luis, um, I think people definitely go to the links in the comment section to learn more about what Luis is doing. If you're interested in Kratom, emancipated human which i think is awesome but i wanted to ask you um as like a forward thinker and a successful guy and an entrepreneur what do you i know you say you live in the moment i read when i was reading through your bio and some of your stuff you said that you um 
teaching about hacking the world. I thought that was an interesting expression. So if you would expound on that. It kind of like froze for a second and I didn't hear what you said. It just sounded oh. robotic. Would you mind repeating that? That's because I have this new headset. So I look cuter with it than those things. But <laughs> uh, you said something about hacking the world. What does that mean? Um, well, you know, a lot of times we are given um, stories. Like, so basically the manifestation of the physical reality is nothing but a repetition of ideas that you have in your mind. So a lot of times we are given this idea that, you know, life is like super hard or that money is dirty or that you have to do mm -hmm. like all of these things that are, I mean, a lot of times it's nothing but just like a, a mousetrap. It's just bullshit run around. So I help people like, you know, uh, get to where they want to be by uh, basically primarily following their purpose. Uh, once you're in that place, you know, actually I have this book right here that I, I was letting somebody borrow. Um, I already got the, the way of the superior man. This one is like fantastic for anybody that wants to read it. So what he says in, in, in one part, he says, the most important thing is your mission more so than even your romantic partner, more so than your kids or anything. Like if you, like if you're willing to let go of your purpose for something or somebody, then you're going to be unhappy because you're not fulfilling your purpose. But it's interesting at the same time, if you are following your purpose, you are being your true self. And then those people that really need to be around you will be around you. So indirectly by going to your purpose, you're going to have, you're going to attract people and circumstances to your life that uh, will make it better ultimately. So that's, that's, that's it. Like hacking it, you know, you don't have to do everything that you were sold growing up. So a lot of times, like those are ideas from our parents. They may have had limited beliefs, even if they were pretty resourceful, you know? So you, mm -hmm. you go through your, um, inner dialogue monologue and see what you know what's useful and keep it what's not useful get rid of it and maybe adapt and adopt new ideas and whatever that's interesting i was just i was talking to somebody today about it i think i made a post about it but um it's kind of like filtering through what the world tells you and then if you do what is right and true for yourself you automatically attract people who want to learn about you. You don't need to coerce people. You don't need to make them understand through force or like just, you know, even nasty words sometimes. If you do what is right and follow your path, people automatically look towards that. I think that's a really, um, that's one of those lines where I think like just spirituality in general uh, meets truth. If, if you're a decent person and you follow your goals, people will automatically pay attention. You don't need to force them or tell them what to do. I think that's really interesting. Yeah. And who, by the way, I mean, who's the author of that book? Yeah. Uh, David Dida. Hmm. Never heard of him. Yeah, this dude is amazing. So, you know, that, that that's, um, hello, cat. Um, <laughs> Sorry. One of the, no, I, I love cats. I mean, I was just petting mine here a minute ago. Um, exactly what you said. Absolutely. So being able to, to do those things, it, 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 you're not doing anybody a favor if you're, um, you know, like sacrificing anything, like just the simple idea of sacrificing means that you would rather be doing something else, but you're sacrificing it for something else. And if somebody's sacrificing sure. something for me, I would feel so bad. Like don't sacrifice it. Just like, dude, do whatever you have. I would feel bad, you know, like somebody's giving up something they really want to do for me. I mean, I, I appreciate it. It's nice. It's honorable, but you better go do what you need to do. You know, do I see it? <laughs> the cat wants to jump on my computer. So, uh, let, let the cat do it. Luis, I told you I'm not fancy. Get the cat on there. I'll show you my cat. Right. Isn't he cute? Yeah, he's totally. Happy. He's Hello. a baby. Uh, <laughs> I told you I'm not fancy. You know what I think we should do? What? I have a couple uh, little questions for you. And I think Patrick did an awesome job of dropping some um, of your website. And thank you, Mr. Patrick. Cool stuff. Aw, yes, he's, he's awesome. 
Um, but I think we should do a couple more Pick Your Poison. I think you're a really interesting guy, Luis. I'm glad we became friends. I am glad too. Thank uh, you so much. You're awesome. Yeah. Um, you have an interesting perspective. Uh, I. It's so funny when you become uh, a voluntarist and you kind of just give in and like fall off the cliff of anarchy. Uh, you meet so many interesting people. And I'm a big fan of just like diving into all kinds of anarchists and just, you know, finding out their perspective because I think they're some of the most... Uh, they, they've let go of their cognitive dissonance, and they're some of the most uh, intelligent people that I learned so much from. So I appreciate your perspective. And Likewise. Also, I think as anarchists, like, we can disagree on certain things and still, like, not hate each other <laughs> because, you know, we I mean, that doesn't know what's happened, unfortunately, because you see all the infighting, which is kind of bullshit and yeah. why some people don't take it seriously. Um you know, one of my heroes uh, is John Mackey. And uh, whenever mm. he got interviewed as far as like why he sold Whole Foods to Amazon, he said, are you married to the guy that was interviewing? He's like, yeah. Do you like everything your wife does? No. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, like that just kind of like that was such a beautiful moment to me to hear because it's like you don't I mean, even the person that you have the closest to you. You don't agree on everything mm -hmm. with them and you still love them, you know, like, so you're just uh, having to. I, I do. I, but I find that with um, my, my closest friends and obviously I have some that aren't volunteers that are very close to me, although they're, they kind of lean that way, but it's, I don't know. It's this weird common thread of like, it's not a political philosophy. It's the fact that I respect that you own yourself and I own myself and I'm not going to hurt you um, or force you to do something against your will. I would rather learn about you and what you believe in. And it's, it's made me grow so much as a person. I used to be so close minded um, and I still have my beliefs. I mean, I, I, I very, I have very strong uh, beliefs in my faith and, but I, I've grown so much more even in my faith going outside of it, you know. Um, like, for instance, I just learned a little bit more about what a shaman was, and I don't think I'm any less for knowing it. I think I probably am a little bit more intelligent for knowing a little bit more about it. Um, the same thing with my um, atheist or agnostic friends, you know. What's your point of view in life? How can I learn from that? And we all have this common thread of wanting to know what actual truth is and not wanting to force other people to believe what we believe. And I think that's one of the coolest parts of voluntarism that, uh, like you said, is much better than us sitting and fighting semantics because that's really stupid. <laughs> and there's plenty of libertarians and voluntarists to sit around and fight about the dumbest shit ever. And it, it's not productive. It produces no fruit. No, not at all. I think that, um, you know, every person is kind of like a page of a book. And if you say, oh, yeah, this is the truth, this is one page, and like, I mean, what the hell happened to the other couple hundred pages? Like, you don't know what the hell the book <laughs> yeah. is all about. And the more that you talk to people yeah. and learn about it, you see it's like, you know, more more uh, understanding of how the world works. So if we just stay with our one page, you know, like, it's kind of like people that never leave their hometowns, and they're like, oh, you got to speak English because you're in America. Like, do you know that, like, when I go to New York, <laughs> Or when I go to LA, like you hear like seven languages going on at once from like 25 different cultures. And like, you know, any kind of big city has the cosmopolitan scent to it, which is like, in my opinion, yes. the apex of capitalism. There is, uh, oh gosh, I cannot think of who the quote was from. It's something about um, letting go of ignorance when you travel. Anyways, it, there was so much talking. truth to it because I, yes. I grew up in a very, I was a hard, hard right winger. And, and not that I didn't have some really cool blessings from my parents, because they're musicians. And so I did learn a lot of really cool stuff. But um, they were so focused on, you know, oh, stay in the United States and we'll just travel here. And we're not. And then a few years ago, I started traveling and meeting people from other cultures and going to other countries. And my mind was blown. Like I just, it opened up a whole new world. I never want to stop doing that. And it's not that I don't love where I live. I, I'm fortunate to live in the United States. I'm fortunate to not be a victim of their uh, foreign policy. But um, 
I certainly don't think that we're uh, what I used to think, you know, like we're some special place in the world and everybody else is wrong. It's like, oh my gosh, I, I love to see how other people live and understand that that's no better or worse than me. It's different and it's amazing. I think as Americans, uh, somebody being born here in the Midwest and just being your traditional, you know, uh, average, hey, American girl growing up, I missed out on so much. <laughs> like, uh, it, it's it's very strange. We have this very, um, we're very tribal as like Americans. and like, we don't want to branch out. We're scared of everything. I think the state probably does a lot of that to us. But uh, you, you just learn so much studying other cultures and, and maybe we do things better than them. Maybe they do things better than us. But what, where's the harm in learning? You know, why, why stay ignorant? No, oh, totally. And my mom, you know, like I grew up hearing her say, like, whenever you're little, I'm going to teach you things. But as you grow up, you're going to have to teach me things to be able to keep up with the world. And like, not everybody, like a lot, a lot of parents are really high. <laughs> awesome. like, I am the parent and you are the child forever. You know, and if we continue that trend, that means that now this is a parent and this is a kid. So like our IQs and our intellect is going to decline because if you can never surpass a parent, then you're kind of fucked generationally going down. Mm -hmm. It's that like what I like, you know, the value of what my parents taught me is like, you have to outdo me, you know? And then that's how like we get better. We get smarter, we get stronger, we yeah. get um, taller, we get wealthier. Like life is supposed to expand most times, you know? So that's, mm -hmm. that's. Uh... That's your kitty cat. <laughs> it's yeah. funny that one, some of the best advice I have two children um, and that I did get uh, it was a, a pastor that was counseling me, and he said, you're not raising children, you're raising adults. So, you know, basically in that same vein, you, you want them to grow and become adults. You don't want to keep them your children. You're, that's not, you don't want, that's not what you're raising. You want, you're raising people no. to be in society. And I think it kind of goes to the same thing. Um, and I do think we're going down a rabbit hole, but let's, let's just go there, Louise. Um, uh, uh, culture in America tends to be very, uh, there's this whole helicopter parent thing going on and we're going to protect kids from everything and we're never going to let them feel pain and, um, we're never going to let them, you know, be free to think or do what they want to do. They have to think along a certain way because that's the safest way to think. And I think the word safety is probably one of the creepiest words, um, you could use. And we're actually, we're doing them no favors. We're actually like cutting them off at the knees. And um, I think that's definitely a cultural problem in America. It's, it's straight. And it's also another thing I've learned from other cultures. That's not the way the most of the world raises their children. Yeah, um, I, I see that. Uh, but at the same time, I think it's a response to all the fear that's happening. Like, you know, here in the States, the idea is like anywhere outside the United States is evil. They're going to behead you. Uh -huh. They're going to rob you. They're going to kidnap you. And now here, like your neighbors, you know, you have to be afraid because, you know, like on, on Fox News, they're like, oh, the leftists are evil. Or like on, you know, MSNBC, all oh, those freaking right wings are crazy nut jobs. And in reality, I have friends on both sides of the sphere. And I have friends that are even are communists and I party with them. And, and, you know, it's like most people, you're going to have a lot in common with them. And in fact, I want to say that most people want the same thing, which is to take care of their loved ones, you know, to, to be able to have a decent living and uh, send, to be able to send their kids to college or, or to, to have their kids be okay kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Everybody wants that. Like the main deal, the main problem is how do we get there? So that's where we vary, right? But most yeah. people are good people. And I want to say that I believe that humans are inherently good. So now the parents outside being afraid of their kids and all of that, I think it's just a, like, it's, it's, we live in the most prosperous and most peaceful time in human history. And mm -hmm. even with the one that- And the, the safest most, for our children. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, a lot of those things are just propaganda. Now he's trying to bite me, little bastard. No, <laughs> no let's see his face. Okay. Hold on. Hang with the... Okay, he's not... 
Aw, hi, buddy. Aren't you cute? Hi, Lenny. <laughs> Cats are anarchists, naturally. Yeah, he's a little bit of a Not status because he wants to troll. Is he? <laughs> and he wants his food for free every day? <laughs> yeah, once a day. Give me wet food. <laughs> Yeah. I don't give my cat wet food because I'm not cleaning that litter box after that. Um, this guy goes outside. Right. Oh, wait, do you have an indoor outdoor? You're probably going to burn in hell. <laughs> I'm, okay. my I'm messing. <laughs> I'm just messing. Um, okay, so what time do we have here? All right. Seven, oh, wow. We had a good life. Yeah. Uh, apparently it's 5.30. I don't know what that means. My clock is forever messed up. All right. So, Louise, we've linked some of the stuff you're doing, um, especially if people are interested in Kratom, because those were the most messages I got. Please go to Emancipated Human. It's linked in the comment section. But you say you live in the present. However, if you had a crystal ball and you could look into the future, where would you like to see yourself for your family or, or even maybe like, you know, the state of uh, the Liberty Movement and things like that? Would you see I the mean, future? I mean, present, but that, that doesn't mean that I don't plan or that I don't think about memories, you know? I mean, that's... That, that, okay, bucket list, I mean, big goal. What's your big goal? Yeah, big goal is, um, I guess, just continue and to expand the consulting firm because I think it's bringing a lot of value. Um, that's, that's one thing. And to continue to, I guess, do a lot of my activism speaking and, and doing all those things and, and to be able to, like, I would like for the Liberty movement, like you mentioned, you know, in general to like, for us not to fight about stuff that we're not even going to see in our life, mm -hmm. you know, that we can become yeah. a little bit more, pragmatic and, and less, you know, like I think Puritanism is horrible in, in religion and in politics, you know, like you're not a libertarian, you're not an anarchist. Like, I mean, really like, oh, no. I get that. And I get that through uh, Christianity too. I don't know if, how much of my page you see, but I have so many people like calling me a heretic and I'm like, Hey, <laughs> I'm just telling you what I believe. I'm not hurting you, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, you know, I just, I just, um, I think it will be pretty awesome. So, especially because it's such a, I mean, it's like so such a novel idea. Like everybody, I think, grows up with the ideology of libertarianism in their household. It's like, you know, when you're little and you're going to go play outside, don't start any trouble. But if they hit you, hit them back. Everybody mm -hmm. says that to their kids. Yeah. Start That's no pretty shit. pretty much the non-aggressive yeah. principle and living, you know, owning yourself. Yep. That's it. You owe no one else, but if they fuck with you, you can <laughs> you can fight back. I said that after. Yeah, like, I must be a nice I you, must be a heretic. <laughs> you're going to burn in hell with me too. In I'm gonna burn in hell. I I honestly believe, and now I'll probably get a lot of crap on the show notes or through my messenger. That tell us, tell us. Um, as a believer in the philosophy of Jesus Christ, he is probably much less concerned with me saying fuck than um, me supporting a government that bombs children in the Middle East. I'm just throwing that out there. Sounds crazy, right? Yeah, yeah, it's so silly. But. Like, you know, <laughs> it, there, there, on the Bible, there is a part that it says that you have to believe your rulers and follow them, you know, and all of that. So it's like, you know, you, I don't, oh, I don't think that. <laughs> I could get into that. Follow Godarchy if you're interested and in why that's not what you think it is. Anyways. Yeah. No, I mean, I, I, <laughs> I feel you basically. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Okay, Luis, uh, I'm going to give you two would you rathers and then I'm going to do a shout out to our wonderful producers who I think are actually friends of yours, which is, this is cool. Um, the guys from Disenthrall, which by the way, if, if you don't follow Disenthrall, you're an idiot because they're like really high quality content and you're getting it for free. And uh, uh, I'm a firm believer, and which is part of uh, what I like about you, that if you're going to espouse um, liberty and talk about being a voluntarist, you're like good at it and don't produce crap. <laughs> and they actually yeah. don't. There's, you know, you could go to them with, you know, any kind of uh, wanting something to be produced with value and they could do it for you. 
it just so happens that they're voluntarists, which is cool. Um, so be the best version uh, a representation of voluntarism. So let's do a, a couple more would you rather, since this is fun. All right. Yeah, All right, Luis, are you there ready? are some people. I really Gird like your those loins. <laughs> <laughs> Gird your loin. Are you ready? Okay. Ready. <laughs> this is like Alex Jones shit right here. Would you rather be absolutely convinced you're in the center of a conspiracy that isn't true or spend every day on an airing? What the fuck? <laughs> 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 okay, go ahead. Wow, that was so funny. Um, <laughs> God, that's a, that's a difficult one. What do you think? Um, what would you think? I'm going to go with the conspiracy theory because I probably have a better time, <laughs> and I'm all about fun. You know, <laughs> I was kind of considering the same thing for the same reason. I was like, you know, we could be acting. It will be like a movie. It will be kind of fun. And uh, Total yeah. Recall came to mind. <laughs> and who doesn't love Alex Jones? You're a national treasure. Like, if you can't appreciate watching Alex Jones, then you probably would need to rethink your life. That's what I'm saying. All right, let's do another one of these, Louise. All right. Pick your poison. My my uh, Mexican anarchist friend. <laughs> All right. You call me in uh, a what? A narco beaner like two days ago. <laughs> Beaner's horrible stereotype. Um, by the way, uh, ironic racism is the only type of good racism. All right. <laughs> I'm probably going to get bad messages from that, but whatever. It's okay. It was funny. Uh, <laughs> it's funny. <laughs> I'll be an anarcho ginger, and that has nothing to do with anything that I have control over. So, yeah, you know, I, um, I'm pretty, I'm the, pretty repressed. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> shoot, shoot, give me that. Okay. Uh, two cards. Come on. I'm Are you here. ready, Luis? Would you rather? I, would you rather get a tattoo of a six pack of beer on your abdomen, or? Find out you've been using someone else's toothbrush for the past year. Um, whose toothbrush would it be? I guess What's that done depends. Is done, baby. Take the toothbrush. Yeah, I'll go. I'll go with the toothbrush person. Yeah, totally. Okay, I want to do one. I I <laughs> I'm gonna do one more of these because it's like literally the last two I pulled up, and it's pretty funny. All right, <clears throat> Luis. Would you rather have your cell phone only be able to charge up to 10% or never, <laughs> or never hit puberty? 10% definitely, of course. <laughs> All right. That's awesome. Well, I think we're going to wrap up this show, this very highly professional show. By the way, I had a really good time. I feel like I could just talk to you. I think people like that. They like conversation. Um, so it's fun. I am going. Yes, I'm going to say go back to the comment section. Um, you can follow Luis on Facebook, just his personal profile. I believe you're you have a public profile. Um, and then Emancipated Human that will link to some Kratom stuff, which is a lot of the questions I got. And then also big shout out to my guys from Disenthrall. That's going to be in the comments. You can get really awesome voluntary stuff from them um, that's produced really well. And you can follow me, which you probably already are. If not, if you got tagged in my life, follow me. And then all my other social media is on there or gingershenanigans.com. Anywho, Luis, it's been a wonderful evening. Thank you for entertaining my bullshit. <laughs> I love it. Thank you so much. It was so much fun. Okay. All right. I'm going to say and fuck the state.